This woman went over. She didn't slap that guy. She was totally off balance and hit the ground and took the woman in front of her down. What we're saying well, is... Well, Gerald, I don't claim I'm a tough shit. guy. I don't claim I'm a tough guy, but I grew up in Dallas and got the hell beaten out of me many times. And I'll tell you, getting off the school bus and having three or four bullies beat me up when I was 10, 11, 12 is what made me what I am today. And I'm not Mr. Tough Guy. But if somebody starts something, I, I go into action immediately. And it's this lackadaisical attitude. You just hit it, not just of the general public, but the elite. This laying down, waiting for somebody else. You just said it. We should economically, societally, politically, we should be more explosive. We should be more proactive. I mean, continue, because I've been interrupting. Continue. Yeah, and, and so anyway, that's a very important message. Because when I say getting in shape physically, emotionally, and spiritually, it really means getting that fight back into you. Because any self-respecting adult that listens to a little carnival man like Connie, or it does sees Obama do is, you know, this guy can't talk without a teleprompter. They're setting him out in the White House lawns now on these big crates uh, and tables, these huge screens. You know, pretty soon they're going to have apps for guys to pick <laughs> up chicks. You know, they're going to be so lame from watching their leaders that can't speak spontaneously and have no courage. So courage, passion, respect, and self-respect are going to be very essential elements in this coming tough times. And I just want to read to you one little paragraph here that we said, and I mentioned this about the summer, and I'm saying this again because it's very important that people understand this. The moral of this story, this was the trend alert we put out that the collapse was coming, is not to let your mind take a summer vacation. Conditions are rapidly deteriorating and it is imperative to remain on high alert. Another financial, another violent financial episode is looming. It may be triggered by economics, e.g. defaults, debt crisis, contagion in Europe, a crashing U.S. dollar, etc. What we're telling people is to stay on alert. You're always on yellow alert. Don't be white. Always be alert. Start learning everything you can right now. Don't be a it's passive jellyfish. Exactly. exactly. And that's what... America was all about being self-sufficient, aware, and, and, and standing up for yourself. Gerald, continuing, any other future trends you yes. see unfolding? And then I've got a few news items I want to I throw at you and also want to talk about an idea you've got uh, about uh, basically the republic has been overtaken and the idea you've got about de uh, direct democracy. But first, any other trends? Yes, and, and unfortunately, Alex, they're going to lead us to war. Fake flag or real, and I say fake flag without being a conspiracy theorist, because after all, remember that wonderful Vietnam War that cost us some 60,000 U.S. soldiers? Yes. Killed over a million Vietnamese, destroyed their country, and wounded another 300,000 plus, plus all the uncounted Americans that have been mentally wounded from a Gulf of Tonkin incident that never happened? Do you remember the Iraq War that began on March 18th? March 18th a day that, uh, that Barack Obama took us to war this year against Libya. The war that we raged because Saddam Hussein... Hold on, he says it's not a war, it's a kinetic action. Well, no, no, the, the Bush one. No, but I'm being sarcastic, yeah. mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. Yes, this is a kinetic action that was going to end in days and not weeks. They're going to take us to war. They're doing it, it's set up. And that's what we're most concerned about. That is our major concern because the economies are collapsing. And by the way, also, I want to repeat this, and I want everyone to listen carefully. Go back to 1933. They called a bank holiday in a time of an economic crisis, right after FDR got elected. Holiday. You can't get your money out of the bank. <laughs> they devalued your dollar. They made, you know the story, Alex. They made you sell all your gold back because in those days the dollar was pegged to gold. They made the people sell it back to the government at $20.62 an ounce or thereabouts. Right after they thought they got all the gold in, they repegged the price of gold to $35 an ounce, which meant that you just lost 40% of your dough. They're going to do it again. 
They, I believe there's going to be an economic 9-11. The last time they closed the Wall Street down, you couldn't cash out CDs. I know, I tried, couldn't do it. This time they're going to close down the banks. We have an emergency. It was caused by, you know what it was caused by? They're going to blame the people that are buying gold. And by That's the way, gonna we're already seeing that. They're already blaming the Tea Party for not wanting to increase spending for what's happening. We saw that coming. And I want to tell you something. On, uh, on both sides of my family, no one turned their gold in. On my uh, mom's side of the family, uh, my, my, my mother's father's father, my great-grandfather, he refused to turn his gold in and said, let him come, and didn't. And then during the Depression and when it ended, he was basically set back up in business when hardly anybody else was. So I'll say it right now. I bought my gold. I paid taxes on the, on the money. It's mine. And I'm going to say publicly, if a bunch of fat cat criminal bankers tell me to turn my gold in because I was right and bought it when it was $300, $400, $500 dollars an ounce, I'm not turning it in. And this is a public pledge. I think everybody should say, hell or high water, I'm not turning it in. Uh, what do you say? I'll, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. They're not going to take it from me. It's not, not going to happen. God bless you. And they're not going to be able to get their hands on it anyway, <laughs> Uncle Sam. Exactly. Yeah, grab this. <laughs> and the other thing, too, I have to tell you, on my side of the family, my grandfather was an Italian immigrant, and he was very proud to be an American. So when, when it happened, my father, may his soul rest in peace, said to my grandfather, my father was a wise man, he said, Pop, he said, don't turn this gold in. And my grandfather did because he wanted to be patriotic. Uh, and again, you want to be patriotic, but it's criminal offshore banks. They're not America. Just because they hijacked America doesn't mean they have the real authority. They're illegitimate, and it's us or them, Gerald. Gerald, I want to run through a few other items before you leave us, but please, because it's such invaluable information, tell us about your Trends Journal, how folks subscribe. Uh, tell people about your great websites. TrendsJournal.com, TrendsJournal.com, and you don't only get the Trends Journal. We have great features. We have... I do trends in the news features twice a week to keep you up to date. We have Patrick Carlin, George Carlin's wiser and older brother. Uh, yeah, George Carlin, right, his wiser and older brother, he used to call him. And he does the lighter side of trends. And we have a new feature. It's a riot. Hans Himmler, America's favorite Nazi. <laughs> he, he escaped Germany. He hid in Argentina. And now he's come to America because he feels at home here. <laughs> so we're really making fun of the, the fascist state America is turning into. And also, for everyone listening, we know how difficult times are, and we have a discount request page. Just go to the page, you know, just fill out the information, and we try to make the Trends Journal available to everyone. Because we want to prepare people for what's coming ahead, and everyone that subscribes, and, you know, and I'm not bragging about this, but every day we get letters thanking us for, number one, waking them up, and also, and this is what I love the best, about inspiring them to grab your future. The future's in your hands. If you don't design your future, someone else is going to do it for you, and you're not going to like it. And you know who those someones are? They're the TSA, the FBI, the CIA, the FDA. You go right down the list, the GOP, the Democrats, Every one of these cats is standing online telling you to stand up straight and bend over. Exactly. That's what's so sick about a Nazi Germany or a Soviet Russia, is when you study the history, and those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it, as you know, Gerald, is that it turns loose every miscreant who, who couldn't even be a garbage man, who couldn't be somebody working at McDonald's, these petty, dumbed-down control freaks who suddenly rule over all of us, we've got to defeat them. What is your view on government and big bank narcotics trafficking? Earlier I covered, of course, that Wachovia and Wells Fargo paid $160 million fine on 370 plus billion in narcotics money in the last two years. It's a $500 billion industry. Who believes in the world that the government and the banks aren't involved in five hundred billion? I tell you, if you'll believe that, I got a bridge I'll sell you. Yeah, you know, people ask me about putting money in Panama. 
that's the last place I would stick it. You know, that, and look at all the money I mean. Everybody knows the game. This whole war on drugs is a sham. And remember those stories when Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas and the CIA planes? Yeah, coming? Mina. Yeah. You know, they, they're out of the news. People forgot about those things. No, there's nothing that the government says that I would trust. And are they, I mean, look at the criminal activities that they're caught in. How about this one? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean is that such a far-fetched idea when you consider the murderous acts that the American government is committing every day with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? Oh, and by the way, the nomenclature has changed, you know, Alex. Oh. American soldiers don't get killed anymore. You know who gets killed? NATO troops. Ah, incredible. Uh, yeah, so, so they're murderers. You know, it's mass murder. But you can't call a mass murderer because, hey, they're the Harvard, Princeton, Yale Club. Well, well Gerald, uh, what do you make of now? It used to be every six months. Now it's every week and almost every day. Amish selling eggs, people selling pumpkins or strawberries on the side of the road. I mean, I've had family does that selling peaches out of orchards. A few or we used to have orchards. The little blight hit them a decade ago and killed them. Uh, I see reports of stores have opened many years selling papayas and organic watermelons and, and uh, organic cheese, and they have more than 100 police raid them, fed, local, you name it, and then they give them a $120,000 bond, charge them with conspiracy for running a public local grocery store in Los Angeles. I mean, sometimes, even though I think I'm awake, it's like the twilight zone. And then I saw the videos that Mike Adams released of this happening. He's joining us next. And the police look like central casting criminals. I mean, they look slimy and sneaky and bullyish and evil. And it was like, my God, have the criminals totally taken over. When banks can steal trillions and launder hundreds of billions in drug money, and, but parents in Chicago can't pack their kids a school lunch because they say we can't trust parents. That's a quote. And you can't grow a garden in your front yard in, a, in, in places like uh, uh, Michigan. I mean, it, it, it's like at a certain point, when does it end? And then you realize we ain't seen nothing yet. It's going to get even crazier. Not land of the free, home of the brave. Land of the cowards, home of the slave, Gerald. You got it. How, you forgot those two, three little girls down in Georgia that was selling lemonade that got busted. Oh, all over the country they can't have it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, they, they, were, they were saving money to go to a water park. I was thinking, yeah, they should have gone to Dick Cheney's waterboard park, you know? <laughs> Maybe that's the next step. No, this is, a, this, is, this, is the, this is why we have Hans Himmler, America's favorite Nazi. This is pure fascist behavior. Again, people rail about Obama being a socialist and a Marxist. Socialism is egalitarianism. This is fascism, the merger of state and corporate powers. What they're doing is they're busting all of the entrepreneurs as the greedy bigs take more and more control. Name the industry, Alex. Agriculture, handful control it. Corp uh, broadcasting, handful control it. Automobiles, handful control it. Food processing, handful control it. Name any industry, any one. Cereals. So and they're greedy. They're even destroying their own market to consolidate power more and more and more. And there's one thing I know our founders were against, and something our country wouldn't put up with, is monopolies. And, Gerald, do you think that the, the bigs have bit off more than they can chew, and that when the history books are written after this hell that's coming, that we are going to finally defeat these monopoly men? We will only defeat... They haven't bitten off more than they can chew. Because after it, they finish chewing it up and spitting it out, they just go somewhere else to chew. They're like a tapeworm that can't, is never satisfied. Or locust. So that's, yeah, locust, very good. So no, and until the people, again, regain their dignity, respect, and courage, and self-respect, you know, for others, respect for others and self-respect, it's not going to change, which is one of the things we're talking about that you, you alluded to, direct democracy. And I'm saying let the people vote. We do not have a representative form of government. The only people that Bonner, Bush, Obama, Reed, Pelosi, McConnell, you go through the list up and down sideways, the only people they represent are the people that give them money. 
The you're very you're powerful, absolutely right, Gerald Salente. And it's like asking. Rich and the special interests. Only a little kid would believe that these people represent us. So bottom line, it's our naivete and our lack of action and being in a comatose state that empowers it. Gerald, we look forward uh, to continue to uh, interview you as you track the trends. Uh, Gerald Salente from the Trends Research Institute, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me, Alex.